So now I've got the sky going on and let's see what the sky is like on it. It's so much easier to do with the buttons on the remote. But I have no choice but to fight for my country. Welcome to hell, sir. I'll never stop loving you. How I am, I know I was. Not bad speakers, to be honest. Brand new world on fire. Sounds quite Press good. For all episodes on BBC iPlayer. Saturday night on BBC One, now the news with Clive Myrie. Nice tell, eh? Definitely better speakers than the LJ. Yeah. I don't know if the pictures is good, but the speakers are definitely better than that one. That one's tinny speakers. Um, and I just wish they could get around the table and fix it. And members of the train drivers union are planning overtime bans in the coming weeks. Also tonight, organisations claiming to represent millions of people urge Downing Street not to water down the government's green commitments. One of English cricket's most successful bowler, oh, Stuart Broad, say, says he'll retire after the Ashes. I've always, you know, wanted I've to watch the Swedish one at the top of uh, of the game, and and England versus Australia at the Oval is a pretty cool way to do that. And after Eurovision, Liverpool hosts Ukraine's biggest annual gay pride march. Hello there, it's been a day of disruption and frustration for rail passengers with close to half of all train services grinding to a halt because of strike action from members of the RMT union. Now it's in the dispute over pay, jobs and working conditions and while talks have been going on for more than a year between the train mm, operators, the work. government and workers, seems a like it a bit more by say. Drivers from the ASLEV union will begin overtime bans in the coming weeks. Our business correspondent, Hannah Miller, has more from Leeds. With almost half of train services across the country ground to a halt for the second Saturday in a row at Flamboyant's Coffee Shop in Leeds, it's winding down their business too. Whatever. Fiona James says customer numbers fall every time Probably there's a strike. On there. I sympathise with the workers, you're going to take a day's pay lost and they're not going to be striking for nothing. That's it's handy. It's extremely difficult for businesses like ours. It's a complete disaster for us. You know, our staff still need paying, the suppliers still need paying. Nice TV. You know, it's really, really tough. Um, I wonder if I keep this one. But the government and train operators insist that their proposals, rejected by this union back in the spring, are fair. We've been negotiating with the leadership of the RMT for over a year now, and it's real. It's a real shame that um, the offer that the we sharp made one. Uh, worth thirteen percent in terms of an increase in pay for the lowest paid has not been put uh, to their Still membership. Still got the same name. Uh, industrial dispute to an end. But the unions say it's about more than pay. The government is in well, control of what the trade yet. operating companies say to us, and even when they speak to us, and they're not allowing them to come back to the table with revisions to their proposals. We're available to do that, but at the moment, we've got a situation where cuts are being imposed, 2,300 job cuts. Uh, every booking office in the country is going to close. Well, it's just after 6 o'clock here at Leeds Station, and the last train has already left. But after more than a year of strike action like this, this is just many about a lot of all size. Nineteen inch is too small. Twenty two inch. Yeah, you start off It's just about watchable. I accept it. It's becoming life. It's becoming normal part of life. 
the, the last couple of weeks, actually, quite a few of my journeys have been affected by train strikes. I, I work quite a bit down in London, so having to change plans, change meetings and stuff like that. I understand why they do it, but I also think it's inconvenient to everyone, who people who need to get to work and people who need to go out. Today was the last day of industrial action in the diary for the RMT, but the drivers' union ASLEF has two more overtime bans in the coming weeks and the two sides in this argument still have a long way to travel before this dispute comes to an end. Hannah Miller, BBC News Not leads. bad speakers at all for tiny town, eh? Organisations claiming to represent 20 million people have written an open letter to Rishi Sunak, warning against any moves to water down the government's environmental commitments. I'm trying to do my part next. Party about its green policies after the opposition to the Labour Mayor of London's plans to extend the city's ultra-low vehicle emission zone. Well, our political correspondent, Damien Grammaticus, is here. So tell us more about this letter that's putting pressure on the Prime Minister. Well, in this letter, these groups, Clive, say that Just it is with do. deep alarm that they have read and seen reports MKB. that the government say and, and Conservative Party MPs are considering and putting pressure on the government to water down, they say, its commitment on almost every Come front on, of environmental policy. They're calling for an urgent meeting with Rishi Sunak for reassurance, they say. Uh, this is groups like the uh, National Trust, the Worldwide Fund for Nature, the RSPB, uh, and they do say that they have mobilised this support in the past sure. the and that they will not hesitate to point out where right. parties stand in the run-up to the next election. All of this comes on the back of that Uxbridge by-election where the Conservatives held 